when I cover uh, diverse groups of animals, such as amphibians or birds, I'll cover the idea that many have a very limited geographic range where they can be found. And thus, if habitat is lost, they can become endangered or even extinct. And then this is also then true of fish. So if you were to consider um, the fish of North America, um, some have become endangered. Uh, and so uh, this uh, Tacopa pupfish uh, was put on the endangered uh, species list, and then it became extinct. And so there are, um, you know, diverse forms of aquatic life, such as uh, these uh, mussels or this fish, which can become endangered, and then uh, can even become uh, extinct, as uh, this fish is also thought uh, to be. And that is how I like to introduce the idea of local fish, because while it's wonderful to be concerned about fish throughout the world and coral uh, reefs, et cetera, um, when considering the fish in one's uh, own area, then uh, these are the ones where uh, you can have the greatest uh, appreciation for, because you can actually go out and uh, observe uh, these. Uh, but then also, uh, as you decide, you know, what to do with uh, the uh, uh, land in your area, uh, who one votes for on uh, local uh, county boards, uh, which policies are enacted as far as protecting watersheds, uh, et cetera. Uh, these are the uh, areas where one can have uh, the greatest impact. And so this video is an overview of uh, the playlist where I introduce uh, the fish which are native uh, to uh, Orange County and those which are found here because they've been uh, recently introduced. Uh, and this is Orange County, New York, um, with the idea that uh, my students then become uh, not only familiar with fish that might exist uh, throughout the world and fish in general, uh, but then also the fish which are uh, closest to home. Now, this is not only important because uh, fish are important as uh, the most abundant vertebrates, um, but also uh, fish are important in food chains. Uh, they uh, feed on smaller uh, things such as algae and aquatic invertebrates, and then uh, they themselves are food not only and animals as now, as a and when they see different reptiles or birds in a forest, as say, you know, in wetland like a marsh, or you might see different uh, birds on mountaintops, as you would uh, be expected to find, you know, uh, in uh, lower lying areas. Uh, in the same way, there are different habitats when it comes uh, to aquatic. Uh, environments as well. And so when one considers the fish that one would find in your local um, area, sorry, I'm just trying to get back to the previous video, uh, there would be differences uh, in the fish that one might find in a lake, a swamp, uh, or uh, a river. And so if one were to, you know, go snorkeling, just put on a snorkeling mask, um, and even scuba is uh, possible in uh, some areas, you can certainly uh, scuba in fresh water. Um, one would observe uh, differences between uh, the bottom of uh, a lake, the bottom of a swamp, and the bottom of fast moving streams versus slow moving uh, rivers. There are differences in aquatic uh, vegetation. Uh, there would be difference in the amount of, of oxygen, which is differences in the inverse algae. Has differences in, so if uh, you're interested in, water, you're interested in uh, fishing, um, the types of fish that one would find in say a fast moving stream, such as trout, a trout would be different uh, than uh, one might expect to find in a warmer uh, lake where one would find more um, bass as uh, sunfish and uh, pickerel, um, and a slower mover uh, moving bodies of water or with less oxygen than say bass or, um, uh, or trout. Um, note here the uh, aquatic invertebrates which are coming um, out uh, so uh, at certain times of the year, insects lay their eggs, and many of the, uh, the larvae are uh, aquatic, uh, and then these uh, aquatic invertebrates, they, um, uh, they then uh, migrate 
uh, I'm sorry, they then uh, form the adult phases. Uh, and so uh, these are all factors in determining uh, what fish uh, can live in specific areas. Now, it's not the main focus of this video to talk about the diversity of fish which exist in the world. Um, but that being said, the most primitive fish are the jawless fish. These are the first fish in the fossil record. And although they are not the majority of fish alive today, there still are jawless um, fish. Uh, there are two kinds. There are lampreys and hagfish. And in the northeast of the United States, lampreys can be found. Now, there is a diversity of uh, lampreys, uh, some of which uh, can live their entire lives in uh, fresh water and uh, are not parasitic, as uh, is the, um, uh, the, the lifestyle of the uh, best known uh, lampreys. And so uh, there are what are called brook lampreys. Um, and uh, there is even some concern that their numbers are uh, dwindling, say, in New York State uh, for a number of reasons, including because of the specific pesticide, the lampricide, which is being used to kill this lamprey, which is the sea lamprey, and the one which one uh, uh, you would be most likely uh, to uh, encounter. Um, and so there are a diversity of uh, lampreys. Uh, sea lampreys, uh, they um, live much of their life in uh, the ocean, but then can migrate, say, up the Delaware River or up the Hudson River and find smaller tributaries where they then lay uh, their eggs. Uh, their eggs form a larval uh, a stage known as an amicete, Larvae. And so, once again, there are diverse um, lampreys which would exist, say, in New York State. Uh, each would have a specific uh, range, and in this video, it'll go through the different uh, kinds. In our area here, uh, the um, uh, the uh, lampreys, uh, which are most likely to be seen, uh, are uh, the uh, sea lampreys, which will be covered in the uh, next uh, video. Um, these amicete larvae uh, are the uh, young form of lampreys, and they are not parasites. Uh, instead, they are filter feeders, where they're just going to suck out algae, um, microorganisms, and then even de decaying organic matter, known as detritus, uh, from uh, the water. Once the, uh, and they can, you know, live, uh, you know, years in uh, this uh, phase, uh, even, you know, perhaps uh, a decade. Uh, once they reach a certain uh, size, then these um, lampreys, uh, which are jawless fish, here's the amicete larvae, and once again, uh, lampreys uh, can um, uh, spend much of their life cycle in this uh, phase, uh, they will then go to the ocean where they become parasites on larger uh, fish. And so they will attach to it, suck out blood and, uh, and body fluids. Um, and uh, once they have reached an, uh, uh, the appropriate uh, size, this may be after a year or 18 months of living in the ocean, they will then return swimming up the uh, Delaware River or the Hudson uh, River from the ocean and then uh, reach our area once again. They can once again enter uh, streams uh, where they would then mate and die. And the uh, females, they can produce hundreds of thousands of uh, eggs at uh, a time, as one can see uh, here. And these eggs, once again, will uh, hatch into those uh, amicete uh, larvae. Uh, uh, the parasitic form of the lamprey is in general not a problem in our area um, because uh, by the time the fish are swimming up the Delaware, or here's females with eggs, each one of these uh, little dots is an egg. By the time uh, the fish are reaching our area, they have completed the parasitic stage of their uh, life uh, cycle as the parasitic juveniles and are now coming into our area simply to breathe and uh, to die. Uh, 
farther uh, up northward in New York in the Great Lakes, uh, they can be a, a problem um, because here, instead of parasitizing fish in uh, the ocean, um, uh, they can uh, be parasitizing uh, the fish of uh, the Great Lakes, and they've you know done incredible uh, damage uh, to the fish of say uh, uh, Lake Erie and the other uh, great uh, lakes, even causing the extinction of some fish which had been native to the Great Lakes, some trout relatives known as ciscos. All right, so the most primitive fish alive today are jawless fish. And the jawless fish, the sea lamprey, is a, a fish which can be found in, um, uh, in our area. Uh, among uh, the jawed fish, the most uh, primitive jawed fish are uh, the cartilaginous fish like sharks and rays. And although sharks and rays can be found off the coast of New York, uh, they are not found in Orange County um, uh, in this area. Uh, so the most primitive uh, than jawed fish are a, a bony fish such as sturgeon, which one can find uh, in uh, the Hudson uh, River, and bowfin, uh, which one can find in our area, such as the Delaware and the uh, Bashakil. So there are different uh, groups of jawed bony fish uh, that branch off at different times prior to uh, the dinosaurs, as uh, some uh, bony fish lineages existed, which have uh, given us, once again, things like sturgeon and bowfin. Bowfin have uh, their name for that long uh, dorsal fin along uh, their length that you could see uh, there. Um, most bony fish are much more recent, having uh, first appeared in the age of dinosaurs or more recently uh, than uh, that. So most uh, bony fish are a group called teleosts. The very first teleosts, once again, coming from the Mesozoic era with the dinosaurs, um, but most of the groups alive today are far more recent um, than that. Um, for some of the bony fish in our area, the fact that the Delaware River and the Hudson communicate with the ocean is still important. So for example, take the American eel, which is carnivorous, feeding on other uh, uh, fish. And notice its prominent pectoral fins, um, but not uh, uh, pelvic uh, fins. Uh, uh, eels, like a number of fish, have very smooth skin um, and can actually do some respiration uh, through their skin, uh, getting uh, oxygen through their skin. Um, these Eels are interesting because you can find it in our area. So this eel was photographed in the Delaware River, uh, for uh, example. And there are even in the Delaware, uh, eel wares where individuals catch eels uh, as uh, you know, a form of commerce. Um, eels are interesting uh, because uh, they uh, migrate as young. Most of the uh, fish which migrate into the Delaware River do that as adults, so adult lampreys or adult shad in the next video. Um, they migrate into our area as adults. Eelings, uh, they migrate up, uh, say, the Delaware River or the Hudson um, when they are young, and uh, then uh, they uh, mature in our area, lay eggs, and then the eggs hatch, and the, the uh, young eelings go back uh, to the, um, uh, uh, they go back uh, uh, to the ocean uh, and in an area near the Sargasso Sea, the adults mate and die. And, uh, and so then the young eelings uh, will then migrate up the river again. And so while we do have eels in our area, they don't mate uh, in our area, they actually mate in the ocean and that's unusual. Uh, because most of the fish which migrate from the ocean, they come here to mate, as opposed to the eels, uh, which are living much of their life cycle in our area, um, but then go to the ocean to mate. Shad have always been very important. Even in colonial times, the Revolutionary Army, uh, you know, uh, depended uh, in one a year on what was called the shad run, when all of these shad, which spend much of their life cycle in the ocean, then migrate up, say, the Hudson or you know, the Delaware, and reach streams in our area. So once again, uh, our freshwater environments are connected to uh, the ocean. 
and a number of fish uh, do migrate up. So here we have uh, fish migrating uh, up the Delaware River from the ocean. These are shad. And this is very important for uh, animals because these shad not only come in great numbers, but then they mate. And while they can survive and then go back to the ocean and do this again, a, a very large percentage of them will die. That they, you know, uh, have this arduous journey, journey up, say, the Delaware. They come to our area, they mate and uh, uh, and die. And so this is not a sign of water pollution. This is just a natu uh, natural uh, part of the life cycle of shad. But the bald eagles in this area, the bear, the foxes, uh, the snapping turtles, uh, this is very important for them um, because this is uh, the shad runs are occurring in uh, late spring when, say, bald eagles are feeding their young uh, or when the herons are returning from um, uh, from uh, their migration. And so shad are not only an important food source for people, uh, and, you know, fisher uh, people often, you know, go out in, in spring, you know, during the shad run to catch shad, but once again, important for eagles and other uh, fish in our area. So just returning to uh, topics uh, which in, you know, this Bio for Today course, you know, I've mentioned uh, earlier, um, humans impact this. And so when humans put a dam on a river, uh, that's important because there are fish. I've just mentioned that the lampreys, the eels, and the uh, shad, uh, they uh, go back and forth between the ocean and these freshwater environments. Um, but there are rivers in the United States where shad used to live uh, or eels used to live and they no longer do because the dams that humans have put on the rivers um, have then block these migration uh, routes. And so human activity certainly affects the diversity of fish, which one can uh, find. So uh, just as there are different kinds of mammals in our area, and some are you know, classified as carnivores, and some are classified as rodents uh, in different orders and different families, the same is true of fish. And as we look at the teleost bony fish, uh, there are a couple of kinds of pickerel, and then a larger cousin known as pike, which can be found in our area, these are uh, predator uh, fish that can get to be more than two feet in uh, length. And there are uh, different spe uh, species which exist in, um, uh, in our uh, area. Um, uh, then uh, there are fish known as uh, perch, and they have cousins known as walleye. And so uh, these uh, fish can be discussed uh, from the standpoint of humans, and, and humans like to uh, catch uh, perch, uh, which uh, can, uh, you know, have very uh, sweet uh, taste uh, uh, to them, but also uh, these are important in uh, uh, in uh, food chains, uh, both, you know, as predators of smaller organisms, but then also as uh, food uh, for uh, larger uh, organisms. Uh, perch often have a, a reddish uh, hue uh, to uh, their fins, all right, as you can see uh, here. So here are uh, perch. And once again, there are different species, including uh, a larger uh, a member known as uh, walleye. Another group of fish in our area are the catfish, um, which include two species of bullhead in our area. Once again, their skin is scaleless. Now there are catfish which have very prominent scales in other parts of the world, uh, but our uh, catfish are scaleless. Um, they live on the bottom and they use these sensory barbells um, uh, that you know can sense things on the bottom, perhaps moving uh, invertebrates or fish that then they can uh, eat. Catfish are interesting in that they actually have taste buds distributed all over their body. And so they're actually tasting the water with uh, taste buds on their skin. They have, uh, uh, spines uh, in uh, their fins, which can inject um, a harmful substance. So if one were to handle catfish, uh, one could get a, a sting uh, from them. Catfish can reach appreciable uh, sizes and be used as, uh, as food. Uh, so catfish are um, uh, one of our native fish. Um, while some of our fish get to uh, an appreciable size, there are some fish uh, which are known as minnows. Minnows is an actual family of 
uh, of uh, fish, and the majority of these as adults reach only a small size. So when we look at small fish, sometimes these are juveniles of a fish a species, um, but uh, very often uh, there are um, and, uh, uh, adults uh, whose uh, lifespan uh, is short and which reach only a small size and which then uh, primarily are feeding on uh, small uh, invertebrates uh, and algae uh, in their uh, diets. Uh, and so there are a variety of minnows which are in our area. Now some do reach um, a larger uh, size. In the United States, in other parts of the world, they are, such as in Eastern Europe. Uh, the carp is not native to our area, it was introduced. And so here's uh, you know, a, a threat which we face. Uh, so human activity has caused the sea lamprey to be introduced into Great Lakes where it did not normally occur. There, were, there was a canal built around Niagara Falls which allowed it to migrate. Um, but here, see, it, it went from, say, one part of North America to another part, whereas uh, carp are actually introduced uh, from uh, the Old World. So throughout Eurasia, introduced into our area where they are the largest uh, minnows. Um, because they can thrive in water which lacks appreciable degrees of oxygen, find them um, uh, thriving in areas uh, where they uh, you know, don't have enough oxygen. And so they have in uh, water. What is an introduced uh, species so human activity um, uh, can affect fish populations in uh, many ways, one of which is the introduction of non-native uh, fish. So once again, uh, minnows, they form a family of uh, uh, fish and include a number of small species, uh, medium-sized species. Here's a shiner, that's a species of uh, minnow, and so named for its, you know, obviously uh, bright shiny scales, um, but then uh, other uh, uh, species as such as uh, the carp, which can get to be uh, larger. Some of the most uh, uh, the best known fish in our area uh, are the uh, larger fish uh, which can be caught in uh, rivers and lakes such as sunfish, uh, crappies, and bass. And all three of these uh, belong to the same family. So sunfish, crappies, and bass are all in the same family of fish. There are two kinds of sunfish which one can find in our area the darker bluegill, all right, which one can see uh, here, all right. Um, it's a black uh, spot with a gill flap there. Uh, the next one, some fish is the pumpkin seed, which is more colorful. Now, although these are not as large as, uh, obviously, in the chamber, many of the meat of uh, sunfish is sweeter than that of bass. Here's the more colorful pumpkin seed, and it's spot on there, uh, better colors than one would see. Um, and so even though you know, many are as opposed to um, as such, you know, you know, the meat uh, that one could uh, cook is actually sweeter, although obviously uh, with the smaller sunfish, you would have to catch more. Kind of in between the sizes of sunfish and bass are relatives known as crappies, all right? So there are two species of crappie in our um, area. Uh, once again, kind of intermediate, both in size and in body shape, uh, from the uh, to uh, both the uh, large fish in our area or uh, the large mouth uh, bass. So there are two species of bass in our area, large mouth and uh, small mouth. Uh, the large mouth um, uh, bass, uh, uh, these uh, are often uh, sought, sought after in uh, rivers and uh, lakes, right? And so I have uh, a little video of uh, bass here, and then I think I skipped one. And so here you'll see uh, the largemouth uh, bass. And so these are so, um, so 
So here's a video of uh, a largemouth bass. So uh, fish are very important for lots of reasons. Uh, so they're an important uh, form of uh, food and recreation uh, in our area. Lots of people like uh, to fish. Um, when talking about the preservation of wildlife, one topic which pops up is ecotourism. So that one could say, oh, you know, let's develop this area, put some houses, you know, here there's certainly an economic gain to that. Um, but uh, many uh, parts of Orange County um, benefit from fishing. Not only is it a, a form of recreation uh, for uh, many individuals, um, but also this brings in uh, tourists, you know, who come up once fishing season starts. They buy gear, they stay at hotels, uh, and so that uh, there is a real economic gain to uh, to having uh, fish in uh, their wild uh, state. And so um, a largemouth uh, bass uh, would be important not only for wildlife, um, but also you know, for humans who you know, depend on it for food, uh, uh, where it makes also um, an important form of uh, recreation. And then this would apply also uh, to trout. Now, trout are relatives of salmon. And um, uh, we tend to call the more freshwater forms trout and the ones uh, which uh, become uh, larger and, and spend more uh, of their life in marine environments, uh, salmon. Um, but it should be noted that if you were to look at the family, you know, this one which you call a trout might be more closely related to this salmon, while this other species which you call trout might be more closely related to a different form of salmon. Um, and so therefore, uh, it, you know, it's one family of, of related fish and which ones are trout or which ones are salmon is uh, more uh, arbitrary. Um, and so uh, these uh, migrate. Uh, and so uh, it's famous that salmon can, uh, you know, migrate upstream to lay their eggs and often even like jump over waterfalls uh, um, as uh, they move upstream. Um, but the same is true of trout. You'll see them jumping uh, in just a little bit. So they uh, can migrate. And then they can also uh, uh, jump. Uh, you know, once again, we associate, you know, uh, the more dramatic uh, jumping of salmon from rivers out west. But even in our area, one can see uh, trout uh, jumping uh, in uh, water and they can migrate upstream as uh, they do so. Now, uh, trout are also uh, uh, greatly uh, valued in our area, so much so that some species have been uh, introduced. And so when we consider the different species of trout in uh, our area, um, and not all of them are native to our uh, area. Brown trout are uh, evident in uh, this uh, uh, video. Um, brown trout are not native to our area. They were introduced here. Um, but because uh, they can survive uh, with uh, less oxygen and in area where the environmental quality is less than the native brook trout, they have been replacing uh, uh, brook uh, uh, trout uh, to varying uh, degrees. Um, uh, so here you can see a uh, brown trout, and I'm sorry, you'll see it better on the original video. There you go. Uh, notice once again that trout are capable of jumping, and this one you know, accidentally hit a, a wood dock as it jumped out. Um, the rainbow trout are also not native uh, to our area. At a certain time of the year, they can uh, have a pinkish color along their sides. Uh, lake trout can uh, be found in our area, um, but were a major um, a species uh, from uh, the Great Lakes and the uh, lamprey's introduction into Great Lakes uh, could have reduced uh, the harvest of lake trout, you know, from millions of pounds down to hundreds of pounds. So the lamprey, this parasite, once it was introduced to the Great Lakes, had a devastating impact on trout, um, including causing the extinction of some trout relatives known as ciscos, which used to live in uh, the Great Lakes. Uh, there is one species of trout which is native to our area, uh, the brook trout. 
uh, once again, human activity can influence around you. Uh, you know, local environment, local fish species, or impact.